Hey y'all, all right, so today we are gonna revisit GM Six Cut. Now, GM Six Cut has not really been used on automotive since about 96-ish. There were a few cars that may have used it after that, um, especially for the door locks, but for the most part, GM was done with GM Six by about 95, 96. You will frequently have people come in or call needing keys so uh, for the older cars. So if you have to go physically make the car, you will have to, number one on the GM6, one of the easiest ways to do it is if it had a lock on the glove box. Uh, you could take the glove box lock out and it had four of the six wafers and then you progress the rest of them. I believe the glove boxes had uh, two through six or one through four, one of the two. Whichever it was, you had to progress out the remaining cuts to get it. And there were progression charts and GM six cut had rules that it goes by. So one of the rules was there's no three number, or you could have three, not more than three numbers alike. So you would have, you could have three, 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 but you couldn't have three, 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 three. And the, there was never, you wouldn't have a two next to a five. I think it was a two cut difference there. So you got five, three. If you look at our flow chart for these, so this is a chart here that was used for, if you have the glove box lock, your next to last cut. So if you have two through, or three, four, five, six wafers known out of the glove box and you have one and two, if your number two wafer was a number one, you would use this chart. If your number two wafer was a number two, or your number three wafer was a number two, you would use this chart, and so forth. And this is your first set of keys, so you would cut the missing cuts. You would try one one, and then you'd cut the one to a three to make it one three, and then two three, so that burns your first key. And then if that doesn't work, you cut your four known cuts again, and then go two two, four two five three so you're just cutting it deeper and then if that one didn't work then you would have your third final possibility so that is kind of the gm six cut information there on that, doing that but if you have to say take a lock out and i'm not even going to get into that um because most time you got to pop the door panel off or to take the trunk lock out you have to get the trunk open and remove you know covers or rivets sometimes the trunk locks are held in with a clip that's riveted in and the door panels themselves of course for all the from 1970s to 96 there's thousands of kinds of gms and thousands of styles of door panels to take off so after you get the lock out is where we're focusing in on this today. And I have a trunk lock here, which is actually what I, uh, this one's the one I have to make a key for. This is a door lock with a lazy cam style mechanism. Uh, don't know what this is off of. Doesn't really matter, but it is a B keyway. And I'm assuming this one came off of maybe like a pull apart or a junk style place and the people want a key made for it or want it keyed to one of their keys. So obviously if they pull a cylinder that's a B keyway and they have an H keyway, it is not gonna work. Nowadays, you can still sort of find what's called the composite keyways to do just this and it fit all the keyways. I believe this one is a composite. See, B, 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 B. Why don't I have all these Bs out here? Because I've got it. Oh, there's an H. So see, H fits this, and a B fits this. So with the composite keyways, you could key up any of the styles of keys to it. However, when they come in with one that's actually off of a vehicle that they need a key for, or they want it re-keyed, 
either which way it needs to be done that is what we're going to focus on and i'm going to talk about the decoder and actually like i said this is a kind of a follow-up video i did a video on this one i will link it right here and uh, i showed me using this to decode the keyway or to decode the tumblers in there and i see tumblers and i uh, was going to go back over that a little bit more accurately as well as show you one other style and and as well as show you taking it apart and replacing those wafers so let's get started on this okay so on this one uh, this is the trunk lock we're going to hold off on this because this is the one that i actually need to do uh, you start off with your clip we've already got this out of the car with the clip i sometimes take a pick and run it over to there this clip stays in place because you kind of bend that down so to get this off uh number one break a lot of club uh picks but i put this in there just to lift it out of the way and then slide your clip off once it passes that hole you are good now another thing that i will do when i'm taking these apart so that i remember how they went back on is after i get this silly little clip off here is i will mark it in the up position with a sharpie um, if i have a sharpie available here typically i will do a line here, a line here, and then that way. So if it was on a different door and it was pointed that way, I would do the arrow that way. So this way I know you can also kind of go here to around. That way it, everything matches up when you get it back together. Most of them will only kind of go back correctly one way. So um, as I've pointed out in that other video, this one we will decode it and then I'm going to go ahead and actually rekey it. This one's kind of had a rough life on the face cap, cap. but that doesn't matter because <laughs> you rip the face cap off. Now, before you do that, make sure you have your refla replacement face cap. Now, there are a couple of cylinders that used a slightly different style cap uh, like optic style that had a ring in it so they're a little bit thicker so before you go and pull your cap if you match it up to make sure that you have a replacement cap so match up the cap to make sure you have a replacement cap hold it up this way because that optic one is a little bit deeper um, but then when you verify you have your replacement cap, which this one uses the common faceplate, we just go ahead and peel it the rest of the way off. Now, yes, there are tools that are designed to peel this face cap off or bend it out of the way so that you can reuse it. I've never purchased one of those tools. While it may have come in handy a couple of times with the GM caps, it is not overly necessary because they are still commonly available. So this is always just a scrap metal item. And once you get the cap off, we have our face plate here, our spring-loaded plate, and the two springs. Okay, once you get that and the two springs off, set them aside because you're gonna to wanna to reuse that. And once we are done, we just push it out. So it will come straight out. And we see one of the biggest problems with just plain decoding these is the little slots here get full of grime and oof. Uh, when you drop the sidebar by picking it, that grime, when you're using your little, whichever type of mechanism you're using to decode it, it can be sight decoded. I'll talk about that briefly, <laughs> but I always take contact cleaner and hose it in there. 
take our key, run it in and out. We can see the six wafers there. They are freed up, and if we see very closely, we can see a little bit of debris on it. So you want to make sure this area is clean because you are using a little thing to go down in there and if there's any debris it will th throw the height off so as you um, if we're just making a key for this and not rekeying it completely it is a simple matter oh, if I could get my pick here it is a simple matter of holding the sidebar in and scraping here just raking raking the wafers until your sidebar falls completely it's fallen if we see here it is fallen on one side but not the other so the back of it's not picked so I'm just gonna come in here and scrape a little bit more and we see our sidebar is down all right and we see a very minute difference there, but if we break it, there we see it came back up. So hold it, rake, make sure it fully falls. It is not fully falling there because of that last wafer. Seems like it's a little problematic. So there we go again. We have fallen down. So. Uh, briefly to sight read it, basically if your pin or the top of the wafer is very close to the top, it's a shallow cut. And if it's really deep down in there, it is a deeper cut. So if we were looking at this, we would match up kind of visually eyeball how high these are. So this one seems to be the highest, so that's going to be the shallowest cut. This one next to it is a little bit lower. And this one is about the same as this one. Let's see if I can get you a good view there. See how this one and this one, so this is six, five, four. Four and five appear to be at the same height. And six is a little bit higher. And then if we go to here, which is three. It is a couple of little notches down. And one is a couple of little notches down and two is a little bit higher. So we've got deep, medium, deep, deeper, medium, deep, shallow, shallow, shallowest. So if I was gonna guess this, if I was gonna like decode it by sight without using any tool, I would simply guess that this, uh, I'm looking at it, now it's always best to cut shallow because you can always cut deeper. So I would initially sit here and think maybe one, two, two. So one, two, two. Oh, what did I do with my, there it is. So one, two, two, and then that is pretty deep right there. But it can't be a five because that's beyond the three. So it might be a four. And then this is a little bit higher, but it's, to me, it looks a little bit lower than this one. So I'm thinking four, three, four. So four, three, four, two, two, one. Four, three, four, two, two, one. Four, three, four. So four, three, four, two, two, one. Let's see how that works. And this was the B key. And this is just to show you that you, you can do this. You don't necessarily need these decoders. They do help for sure speed up things. And we're using our Curtis 14 clipper on the GML bar. There is a GM bar here, so don't let that confuse you. It's missing a one, uh, because one is always gonna be no cut. So 
Um, but I'll G GML for some reason. This is the one I've always used. I don't know. Four. Three. Four. Two. Two. Whoops. Okay, I messed up. I messed that one up. I love messing up a key in a video. Let's try that again. Four. Three. Four. Two. Two. One. One, which is no cut. Hit it with a brush. And see if it drops our sidebar. Oh. Eh. It's a little corroded, so the sidebar did not drop really on its own, but it does completely drop. So we'll check it. Check it in the uh, cylinder here. And that appears to be it. Let's put a little lubricant on there, which I don't have any lubricant in here. Oh, there it goes, okay. It should, should free up. So there we go, you don't even need the decoder to do it. You can pretty much visually decode the key what it's gonna be through through this. So if we do the same thing, if we have a decoder, which we have two, and I'll go over that real quick. I'm gonna rake, rake, scrape it again. Scrape, rake it. That last one just does not like falling, probably because it's that one cut. Okay, so we're down again. All right, this is uh, A1s, I believe. So basically, and this is what I featured in the other video, but basically you see three, two, five, one. So when we push it down, as far as it'll go, we circle around until we find which line it's on. So it's not on line five, not on line three, not quite on line two, definitely not four, and the line is lined up on one. And then it's just doing the same thing over and over again. Two, we see that is sticking up a little bit. But if we go around, it looks like it could be one, too. So that one, but, I don't know. Could be one, it's lined up the same. Two is sticking up a little high. We'll go to the next one. Two, sticking up a little high again. One is right on it. So we're going to go back to the one and check it. So if you were reading this with this thing, it looks like they're all one, but you can see how this one is up just a bit. And if we go to this next one, it is down. So that means it's definitely a two. So we had the one, two, two, and we got four sticking off of it just a bit. And three. And now here you have to watch because there is a little ledge and when you try to read that sometimes your little nose will hit that ledge and throw off the reading. But here we're coming back with four. So that verifies one, two, two, four, three, four, or reading it correctly, four, three, four, two, two, one. Same way with this reader. This is just a multi all at one time reader I never have been fond of this Kedex reader 
but to use it, turn it around and push it down as good as you as far as you can go. And after you get your cuts there, remember on which way you held it, so you know which way is forward and backward. So we know this is starting at number one. So then you hold it up next to your chart here. And if we are reading it, it looks like it's five, four, five, two, two, or three, three, two. Five, four, five, three, three, two. But if you read this, it says, on rare occasions, if the key does not work, cut one depth lower in each position. So if we were gonna use this reader, and it's reading five, four, five, three, three, two, we're gonna cut it four, three, four, two, two, one. Always, because you can always cut it down if it doesn't work. If we went by that, I'm just gonna just burn another key here. It's a good thing I have 5,000 B keys and don't ever use them anymore, right? So if we cut five, it's one of the things with the clupper is it got jammed on the, on the five cuts. So five, what was it? Five, four, five. Five, four, five, three, three, two. On that last one, you do have to hold it kind of tight because it wants to kind of ramp off the key as it's cutting it. So there we have five, four, five, three, three, two. And if we were to try it in the lock, it works as well. Uh, 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 uh. But it's a little bit catchier. And you take in the age of the ignition, the doors, you would really, if you were at the car, wait, that's right one that was my bad bad, bad key um, you would basically go between these two it could be either one of these because they're both working in this one but with the deeper one you do have to jiggle it a little bit more so my inclination here is that I was right with the four three four two two one because it's a lot smoother however to take it even one step further I'm going to take the lock apart